Sneaky boy. Good boy. Outside the Bondi Clinic, five-year-old Kelpie Jasper is staggering uncontrollably. That's you. Owner Heidi is struggling to hold her baby Lexi and stop Jasper from falling over. Up you go. Up, up. I know there's a few stairs here. Every day when I take him for a walk, watching him fall, it all breaks my heart to see him fall over. Definitely. Jasper suffered a knock to his head as a puppy before Heidi rescued him. What started out as a small balance problem has now become a shocking affliction. What I'd like to do is actually see how he moves yep. and, and really do a full examination on him. If it's okay with you, even though I know your hands are already full, <laughs> is actually go to the park. Oh, here just... go. Yeah, so he's not too bad, like when he sort of gets it together. Way everything. Hey, buddy. Hey. Relax in, didn't you? It's all right. Yeah. I know some people would look at Jasper and think that this just isn't fair on him and that maybe he should even be put out of his misery. But when I look into Jasper's eyes, to me, he's not unhappy. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with the fact he's loved so much. That jerky way of moving and getting around and the fact that nothing is done in a smooth way is really characteristic of, of one particular part of his brain not working. Yeah. And that part of the brain is the cerebellum, so it's just at the back here. Yeah. And what it does is if, if I want to go and pick something off the ground, then my cerebellum controls that and makes sure it's a nice smooth move. Yeah. And then brings it back. Whereas if my cerebellum wasn't working, it's like it is like being drunk. It's it's all over the place. Can't work out where he or you know, yeah. 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 That's normal. You should see the leg kick out like that. Yeah. He's a complicated little guy. Can we solve his problem? I hope so. But the reality is, I just don't know. I need to do a brain scan to see if we can improve his life and Heidi's as well. Oh, my God. You're a kitty. I know, you were scared oh, and sore. A frightened cat has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sack with a suspected snake bite. Ooh. How are we going to hurt you? But examining Dougal is going to be very difficult. <laughs> Gives me a fright every time. This cat has apparently been found next to a black snake and according to the owners, he's got a swelling on his face. The problem is he is seriously angry and we cannot get near him. Far out, you're crazy, kitty. Ooh. This is not funny because snake bites are actually really serious, but Dougal's owners are refusing to appear on camera. I think they're embarrassed by his behaviour. Well, he's in there. You're going to be fun, aren't you? So I think our only option is to give him an anaesthetic with gas. Lisa now has to get Dougal into the anaesthetic chamber. You should have a first aid kit. The question is, can the team do it without casualties? Dougal is nuts. He could really hurt someone. He is a shredding machine. I've got all these mats down so he doesn't slip. Back home with Jasper, Heidi's constantly on watch to make sure her Kelpie doesn't hurt himself. Good boy. Chris has called in some favours to fast track an MRI scan for Jasper. Good boy. The scan will confirm whether brain damage is causing his deteriorating condition. That's a good boy. We try anything to see if there's something we can do to help him. Because if he could get better or if he could regain any balance or even his hearing, <laughs> it would be pretty amazing. <laughs> He's just popping up there, just on his back. Freaking me out, watching him, seeing him on the table, um, out to it, and yeah, it's just a scary thing to see your animal like that, definitely. Jasper's brain scan is about to begin. See you soon, Jasper. Back soon, buddy. Chris is hoping it will reveal just what's causing the brave Kelpie to look like this. Hey.
have a look right in here. This is a CSF in here, and that's the space it sits in, and that's a ventricle. And that looks really big. Yeah. Yeah. That could be causing his problem, I think. Yeah. So it's like having a, a water balloon inside the brain that's being filled up with water and, and pressing on that brain, and, and that may explain the signs we're seeing in Jasper. I think so. The key to Jasper Future is going to be working out why that fluid is building up. Yep. And then I guess most importantly, working out, hey, if it's building up, can we actually reverse that? Can we take that fluid away? Yep. And if we can do that, then there is a chance that we may actually be able to do something for Jasper. Just a chance. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but just a chance. Jasper's scans will now be sent to a neurological specialist for further investigation. Definitely better news than, than I thought it was going to be, so it was really good to see those scans. You look at Heidi and you see what she's been through, especially in the last few weeks when Jasper's really deteriorated. You just want to know a good outcome here. And I really hope we're going to get it. At SAC, Lisa's trying to get close enough to the frightened eagle to find out if he's been bitten by a snake. Now let's just hope we can actually get him into the anaesthetic chamber without any casualties. Got him? Yep. Alright, that's the hand back. Three people to wrestle a five kilo cat, isn't that just great? It's taken a few minutes, but Dougal is finally under my control, and now I can actually start looking for the bite site. The problem is we've already lost valuable time, and if Dougal has been bitten by a black snake, then that venom is already attacking his system. I think we've definitely got some soft swelling over here, um, and two puncture wounds over there. With puncture wounds found, Lisa has the evidence she needs to start giving Dougal the anti-venom treatment. Give him five minutes for those meds to kick in. He can't even lift his head and he's growling already. Not a happy camper. Even though everyone's having a laugh about Dougal's personality and how aggro he is, it actually is quite a serious situation. It's normally we give it over half an hour, but we'll just go a little bit slower in him. I just don't want him to have a reaction. The problem with black snake bites is that the animals can actually get worse before they get better. Sometimes they can have delayed signs, so it's really important that we keep a close eye on Dougal and only send him home when we're 100% sure he's recovered. just Lisa who's coping with cranky customers. Next day, Chris gets an emergency call from the Australian Reptile Park to treat a patient he's not looking forward to meeting. Well, we've got a gator Flo, one of our big girls, and normally she'd put her eggs just safely in a nest. But we've found a couple that have just been dropped here and there, nowhere near the nest. Yeah. And that worries us because it's never happened before. OK. And um, Flo's a nice girl? Well, not at the moment. She's, she's got a nest that she's built defending, so she's as cranky as ever. It's good news. If she's laid the eggs in here, then they're going to be cooking in this heat. That's Absolutely. Well, alligators are not from Australia, <laughs> and our son here, it, their eggs become hard-boiled. They, uh, they don't hatch, so we need to get them out and artificially incubate. That's pretty easy, obviously, getting those eggs out with her there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, mate, I've only done it once before. <laughs> The gators are normally pretty defensive when you enter their pond. They'll charge you, but this time we're dealing with a mother. Hormones are involved. This could be messy. Why can't you be like the other ones? That would be nice. Small gators like this sometimes are really fiery. Um, you know, they want to guard these nests. It, it is a matter of life and death. Look at that. The other more serious worry is that Flo might still have eggs stuck inside her, causing her erratic behaviour. For a reptile being egg-bound, 
puts their whole system under extreme stress. They're constantly straining, which means they build up a lot of lactic acid. Too much, and their system shuts down. Well, you get back over here. You want to pop back over here, Chris? At the Australian Reptile Park's Alligator Lagoon, Chris is attempting to get close enough to flow for an examination. I'm going to say when she's jumping around like that, you have to watch yourself and make sure that there's no gators behind you and make sure that she can't attack you from the front. Just watch these because they'll come running, mate. It's all going on in there and you just got to make sure you're in a good position, otherwise you get caught out. The first time out, Mum right? has left two eggs out in the open, which must be collected before they cook in the heat. To jump on her, we've got to get in and we've got to get the eyes closed. Now, see, you've got to get reasonably close and that's where they're dangerous. Comfy there? Yep. Before Flo's examination, Chris and Tim retrieve the rest of Flo's eggs so they can all be incubated. So that looks like it's about it. Yeah. How many have we got there? About 20. About 20 or something. Jeez. Yeah, not many. Yeah, small female, but um, we, we'd probably expect a couple more. If that's it, then I've still got some concerns yeah. that she may actually had some stuck inside her. Yeah. One, two, three. That's it, Anna. She's actually torn there, so that may have even been the effort of, of laying those eggs. It looks yeah. fairly fresh. So obviously she did have a bit of a struggle. I'm just going to make a couple of sweeping movements through here just to see if we can visualise any eggs. With 40 alligators lurking in the lagoon, this will be the most nerve-wracking ultrasound Chris has ever performed. This whole procedure is so time critical. If Flo is egg bound, she's going to be building up lactic acid by the second. We need to get in there, work out if she is, and then treat it. We'll check the other side as well. That's all fine. Happy there's none? Yeah. That's all okay. All right, we're probably right to let it go. We needed to get the eggs out, and we needed to give her the clean bill of health, and we got both, so great result. One, two, three. The eggs will now be incubated for two months before the arrival of Flo's youngsters. Good luck, guys. We'll see you later on. Once they hatch, they're going to be ferocious little monsters. I can't wait to see them. Oh, my goodness. This is a different cat because before he was lunging at the cage and now oh. he wants some kisses. Hey. Look at you. Sasha's most feared patient has survived a snake bite. Oh my goodness! What a different cat! And appears to have had a personality transformation. He was like a wild zoo animal that we couldn't get near without sedation. Now he practically came out of the cage to cuddle us and he is just a completely different cat. Hello, buddy! But there will be one more test of this prickly Thank patient's you. personality. I still don't trust you though, buddy. I'm no, sorry. I don't trust you either. After your performance, we're going to be taking out his IV catheter, which is not pleasant for even the nicest of cats. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge with Dougal. We've got some sedation ready in case he decides to not play with us. Or he does decide to play with us. In his way, <laughs> not our way. <laughs> We are up here. Nearly done. One, two, three. Come okay. on, Dougie. All right, just a band-aid. Worst is over. It's all over. I'm always happy to see my patients go home because it means that they're better, but I don't think Dougal's going to be on my Christmas card list. And I've given him strict instructions that he needs to be a good boy to his family. He really needs to keep the only friends that he's got. So, Dougal, you happy to be leaving us at Sash? Please don't come back. I know. You're a good boy. The next day, an anxious Heidi brings Jasper into Sash for a second opinion from specialist neurologist Georgina Child. Hello, oh, Jasper. One more. Yes, he has an abnormality on his scan, but I don't think it explains all of his clinical signs. Mm. And I, you know, at this point, I don't think that surgery is going to help him. Sadly, there will be no miracle cure. Oh, goodness. I think 
that whatever problem he has is likely to be a problem within the, the structure of the, the brain itself. It's not something that we're going to change by, say, draining the fluid from, yeah. from his ventricles. Yeah, oh, that's a real shame. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't gutted when Georgina said there's nothing more we can do. When you've done so much and come this far only to get the answer that you probably feared all along, it still hurts. Cool. I'd probably go home and burst into tears or something, but I'm, um, hopefully we'll have a few more years out of it at least. Even though we've done every form of medical examination, doesn't mean we can't use our imagination and try to come up with some other solution to help him out. I don't like giving up. We tried. And honestly, Jasper's situation has really been playing my mind. You look at him and you see this dog that so stoically and so bravely carries on, it almost forces you to do more. Chris has kept his promise to Heidi and Jasper. He hopes he's found the answer to help the Kelpie with the inoperable brain disease. Hello. Hi, How Chris. I'm Helen. Hey, Helen. And are you the famous Jasper? Yeah. Hello. This is a bit interesting, isn't it, Jasper? I do you like your walks in the park. I think it's going to be running in the park. Sometime. Running in the park? You're a speed demon. It could very well be <laughs> a speed demon after this. <laughs> Now, Mr Jasper, you are looking good. Hey, here we go. Here we go. I guess part of you expects that miracle where he's going to hop into that cart and suddenly sprint out and, and get himself in the car. It's, it's, it's not the reality, though. Here we go. Here it's we just go. the beginning for Jasper and his canine cart. Here we go. Many of the other patients at the rehabilitation hospital are achieving amazing results. Yay! Yay! Nice. Hey buddy, look at you go. What we're seeing is the first brilliant steps and give it a couple of weeks, it's going to be amazing. See, already it's getting easier, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Do you want to come outside? Oh my gosh. Oh, actually the luckiest boy. Walk to mum. Oh, walk to mum. Oh my goodness, look at you. Oh. Yes, but you've got, look at that little help, so I didn't have to be holding you up the whole time. Exactly right. <laughs> wow. Oh, Jasper. That is amazing. That is amazing. For him to have that now, I won't be so worried, which will be oh, just oh, so make my life so much easier. <laughs> oh, you're so Oh, Jasper. Here's Flo's little gators. Ah, just hatched. Hey, guys. You have to get ready to grab him. Ready? Yeah. Grab oh. him. <laughs> Thought you were going to be hard boiled, didn't you? First four. Two months later at the reptile park, and Flo's babies are starting to hatch. But will the new arrivals end up as feisty as their infamous mum? They're little miniature Flo's. A lot of attitude, a lot of get up and go. Uh, <laughs> How's he feel? <laughs> He's gotcha. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's going to be fine. And even a nice little bite just to remind me of the fact that they're Flo's babies. Boy. As for Jasper, look at him now with his new wheels. Good boy. Oh, I'm absolutely amazed and so impressed with um, Jasper's progress with these wheels on. Oh. Everybody comments on how amazing he's been doing and how, um, how strong he looks and how confident he is and just how much better he's walking. Like, almost every day I get comments from people saying, oh, you know, is that the same dog? Very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Go home and have a bottle of champagne, Jasper. <laughs> good boy, good boy. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.